Hello, hello, and welcome back to a woman, women of hope. I would say, well, I anyways, <laughs> welcome back to women of hope. I'm so thankful and honored to be here. God is doing some amazing things here at Hope, and I'm so glad you're a part of what He's doing in the kingdom. Well, you know, before we get into our lesson, God always wants us to get our hearts right, our spirit, our mind centered on Him. So we need to worship. And before we worship, I'm going to lift up a quick prayer. Father God, we thank you, praise you, and honor you for being here, for just allowing your spirit to flow while we worship you in spirit and in truth. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Let us worship. Hello, hello, hello. And you know what? I am so excited because what God has is us to wrap up the perfect plan, God's perfect plan now. He wanted us to talk about it. I know we talked about it for seven weeks, right? But he said, Laura, just go over it. It's kind of like a final exam. No, just kidding. <laughs> it's just a time that we're going to just revisit some of the P words that he gave us. But you know, 
I've got to pray again. Thank you, Father, for this time. Thank you, Lord, for your perfect plan now. I thank you that as we enter this lesson, that you prepare our ears to hear, our hearts to receive, and that we are just walking in your perfect peace. We thank you and praise you, God, for what you are doing in us, through us, and for us. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. God, allow your spirit, not me, move me out of the way and allow the Holy Spirit to speak through me in Jesus name. Amen. Now, amen, amen, amen. Waymaker, come on. God is a way maker. Even though we don't see it, when we don't feel it, God's plan is being unfolded. He is making that way. And I love it. As I was, um, just going into my prayer closet and asking God, okay, God, what are we going to learn? What are we going to um, hear from you this Friday for Women of Hope? And I was asking, I'm like, I want to know, God, I, I, I just want, um, and he wasn't giving me anything. And I was getting kind of like, hmm. And I said, okay, well, I, you know, and so Thursday, if I don't have anything by Thursday, I'll just close everything up, close it up and say, nope, I have to listen and wait for God. And usually, you know, he gives me the download and, and, and it, it's, it's him. He really basically what he gives me is the scriptures. That's it, his word. And then whatever I'm gonna say, the Holy Spirit uses my stories or whatever. But I, I am so in awe of God because he said, we're gonna go over God's perfect plan now and that we're gonna do an overview of what we talked about. And I'm like, because the whole thing is when God is unveiling his plan, when he's unfolding it in your life, when he's giving you breakthrough, we need to have peace. When it doesn't go our way, when it doesn't go our plan, because God's plan is better than ours. So of course, our first P word that he, we want to make sure we know that it's God's perfect plan and it's his plans, right? In Proverbs 16, nine says, a man's heart plans his way. So a man's heart plans his way, but the Lord directs his steps. Come on. That's God tells us right there. We're going to have plans and we want it our way, right? But the Lord will direct our steps. He will lead us to his perfect plan. And Philippians 1, 6 says, being confident of this very thing that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Please listen. God will complete his plan, his perfect work, whatever is happening. Normally, the things on the outside are trying to change the things that are on the inside. God is trying to do a transformation, a cleaning up, a rooting out. He is working his perfect plan by us understanding that it's his plan, that it's his thing, whatever it may be, as we're persevering as we're going forward and and we're prepared to just walk in his plan he promises that he's going to complete the work and it's usually by whatever is going on i know trials and tribulations i know i hate saying that but it it, it we need to be at peace through anything because god is the way maker but how do we do that we have to remember patience Oh, yucky word, huh? What do you mean, Laura? Patience. God. Yeah, mm hmm. That's the only way is through patience. Because Psalms 27 14 says, to get God's perfect plan, we have to wait patiently for the Lord. Be brave and courageous. Yes, wait patiently for the Lord. Okay, God is saying that we have to wait on the Lord. We have to, it, it, it is, this is an NLT, the New King James Version says, wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and ye shall, he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say on the Lord. Imagine that, 
If we wait on the Lord and be of good courage and don't get scared of what's going on or don't freak out, that he's going to strengthen us. He's going to strengthen our heart if we wait. And when God repeats himself and he says, wait, wait, he's trying to emphasize we need to wait for God's perfect plan to unfold. We can't go ahead of God. You know, in James 1, 3, and 4, it, it's New King James Version says, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. Right there. But let patience have its perfect work that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Okay, God's perfect plan, how are we going to be perfect? Is by being patient. And God isn't asking us to be perfect on our own. He isn't. He's saying, just work in excellence. Be patient. I mean, right there, come on. Lacking nothing. Let, but let patience have its, per, its perfect work in us. So God wants us, he's working in us. So as we're waiting, as we're in the waiting period, if you ever had to wait for anything, I hate long lines. I hate traffic. I know, I do. I'm going to be honest. Um, today, my, my son asked me to go to Cane's. And I don't know if you've ever been to that fast food restaurant in Pico Rivera. It has a long, long line. I mean, it come, goes out the street. And I'm like, really? Today? And my grandson was coming. And he was supposed to be at my house at 1130, but my son gives me money. He says, please, mom, I'm hungry and I really want canes. And as you know, he has a shattered knee right now, so keep my Stephen in prayer. So I'm like, okay, son, that wasn't in my plan, but I'm being patient and I'm being kind. So I said, I'll go. And I said, I, I'm like, huh. Oh. And I was, I get to canes and then there's no line, hardly. Because in Pico Rivera, we have a lot of Catholics that don't eat meat on Fridays. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, yeah. There was only two, three people in front of me. And I was like, yay. I mean, and I got home right when my grandson pulled, well, my son pulled up with my grandson. And I'm like, wow. And even that with my, with my son, Michael, asking me if I could watch my grandson. I'm like, yes, of course. It wasn't part of my Friday plan. My Friday plan was to do, you know, certain things that I needed to get done and come here to Women of Hope and celebrate my friend's birthday and blah, blah, blah. And anyway, it's interesting because when we let the plans that we don't have orchestrated just happen, just, just don't, how do you react? Before I used to get flustered and I'd be like, oh no, no, I got a baby Sebastian's coming. I can't go get you food. Oh no, no, no. I can't get you. You know, and it's interesting because we got to just stay in peace. No need to fluster. God's perfect plan. And I was telling Jason here that, you know, it's got so great because when we don't get flustered, I don't know if you give the accountability, I mean, not the account, but the credit to God, giving you all the green lights. I mean, I'm telling you, these are lights that I always get red lights at. And I was like, I got to hurry back, God. And psh, all green lights. And it was no traffic, no line. So when we just stay at peace and we allow that patience to just do its perfect work in us, He's working in us. And I tell you, I work on the fruit of the Spirit all the time. <gasps> what do I need to mature, God? And I, if we don't pass the test, He's going to make us go through it again. Get, us all, get all those red lights. Get all those long lines or things that we have to wait on to see how we're going to respond. We can't react. And Isaiah 40, 31 says... But those who wait on the Lord, this is my, one of my favorite scriptures because I've been waiting on some things, let me tell you. <laughs> I know some of you know what I'm waiting on, but God knows. Anyways, but those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run 
and not be weary. They shall walk mm -mm -mm, and not faint. Come on. Those who wait on the Lord. Do you want strength? Do you want to mount up like an eagle? Like soar above your issues? Soar above the problems? Say, uh-uh, I ain't going to even be bothered by all this junk. I'm soaring above. I'm looking at it like <laughs> it's down there. It's under me, right? All the tribulations and trials are under your feet. You don't have to engage. You don't have to, yes. Uh, no, be an eagle. Fly over it. Mount up. And I love it. And it says you, will, you shall run and not grow weary. It's funny because I, um, with Stephen being um, in recovery, I needed to cut the grass. I wouldn't wait. It was getting long. And, you know, I think I'm 21. I don't know. <laughs> Just my inside of me. Still, I feel so young. But anyways, my body is young, but cutting the grass is work. It is work. I, I, com I commend all those that cut grass. I'm like, I my hubby up in heaven, I'm like, well, I wish I would have appreciated that more. I just thought, you know, I scrub toilets, you cut grass. You know, it's a good exchange. But now having to, I've cut the grass twice and I ain't gonna do it no more. <laughs> But why I'm telling you this was because I was going to get someone to cut it, but I didn't want to wait. I didn't want to wait to arrange it and da, da, da. I didn't wait. And God kept saying, don't cut the grass, Laura. Get somebody. Get somebody. And I wasn't listening. We'll talk about it in a bit. But God's perfect plan wants to make sure that you remember it's God's plan, not yours. And that you have to be patient in the waiting. And when you're, when you're waiting, what do you do? Praise. We praise. Hebrews 13, 15 says, Therefore, by him let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise. God knows that in your, in your waiting, it's a sacrifice to praise him. It's hard sometimes when you don't see a way out. I know. I've been there. I'm, I'm sometimes there now. And I'm like, I don't see a way, God. But I'm going to praise you anyway. I'm going to praise your name because you're a way maker, God. You're a way maker. And sorry, I get <laughs> of praise to God. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. What is coming out of your lips? What are you saying? Are you praising God or talking about your problem? God says, don't talk about your problems. Praise his name. Talk about his promise. Talk about what he can do in your life, what he's done, what he's doing, and what he will do. If you, if you focus on the problem, it's just going to, it's like adding fuel to the fire. It's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And I know you don't want that. You want God's perfect plan now. So remember his plan with patience and praise. Psalms 96, 1 and 2 says, Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. He wanted me to remind you of a new song. Stop singing the old, same old, same old. I don't know if you've ever heard anybody say, Oh gosh, the same old, same old. They sing the same old, same old, meaning they are complaining and murmuring. They're talking about their issues and their problems. I know we need to vent. By all means, please. I'm not saying you can't discuss what's going on in your life. I understand. Get prayer. Come along and, and, and because that's my next P. It's through prayer. Praise and prayer. Because prayer, Philippians 4, 6 says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Come on, with thanksgiving. We need to thank God for what's going on, for his perfect plan. We can't be nervous. We can't be anxious. We can't be worried. Yeah, but you don't understand. No, God understands it all. 
He sees the beginning and the end. He's working through you. He's working that worry out of you, that stress out of you, that anxiousness. He doesn't want you anxious. He doesn't want no anxiety attacks. That ain't of God. No, don't let it. Don't let it happen. Say, uh-uh, devil, you're out of here. You bind that. You say, I bind the spirit of anxiousness. I cast it out. No way. And I'm filled with the Holy Spirit and his peace. I lose peace upon me. You have the power. You have the strength through prayer and what you believe. Because James, or gather with someone. James 5.16 says, confess your trespasses to one another. Trespasses. Hmm. Is that your problems? Is that what you're going through? Or is that what you're doing wrong? Trespasses is usually your sin. I know that I had confessed to all of you guys that I said a bad word. Oh my goodness, I'm so sorry. I did, I said it. I confessed my sins to one another. And it says, you know, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another. Don't gossip about me. Don't say, Who does she, look at her. She's out there preaching and then say, no, don't talk. Pray for me. Pray for your sister. She needs it. <laughs> uh, but you know what? I'm transparent. I ain't perfect. I know that. I, I work with the spirit of excellence, but I know I'm a work in progress. I am. And I thank God for grace every day. Thank you for your grace and mercy, God. Pray for one another that you may be healed, healed of all that yuck. <laughs> Why? Because the effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avail, or woman avails much. Avails much. The fervent prayer, that means diligence. That means praying without ceasing. That means keep on keeping on. Keep saying, come on. I pray for all of you. I pray for the women of hope. I pray for the men here at hope. I pray for our pastors. I pray for our children. I pray for our ministries. I, I mean, I'm constantly praying for hope. I'm saying, come on. And not just hope, but for the kingdom, for my family, friends, for anyone who watches on YouTube or beyond, for the nations. I, I Pray, 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 pray that God is doing his mighty work. His hand is upon us and he is allowing his perfect plan to happen, to be unfolding now. And so his plan with patience, praise, and prayer because we have to stay in peace. My next one is peace. God gave me eight words. I'm going to tell you something in a bit. Peace. Philippians 4, 7. It's the other half of the be anxious. And the peace of God. He says, if you're not anxious, this is what, get, what you get. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, meaning your thinking, your imagination, your knowledge, all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Will guard your heart, your heart that surpasses your understanding. You can't even define it. You can't even imagine it. It's more than you can imagine. I love that. I love that he says, be anxious for nothing. And this is what you get. Come on, God's peace. Isn't that worth it? I don't know about you, but that gets me excited. I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm learning to walk in his peace, to walk patiently waiting for his outcome. When things don't go how I plan, don't get frazzled. Just walk in his peace. Because Psalms 29, 11 says, the Lord will give strength to his people. The Lord will bless his people with peace. His people. Are you called by his name? Are you walking as his people? There's a lot of peas. I'm telling you, I'm going to, I'm amazed with God. He is, he is a detail God because with God, all things are possible. If you call me, that's my, um, voicemail. I'm all leave your, leave your, um, Leave your message and I'll call you back because all things are possible. You know, with God, all things are possible. And it's funny because I laugh, my friend laughs about it. She goes, yeah, we need, you need a little bit of God if I'm going to get a call back from you. I think I call you back. <laughs> I do. I call you back. I text you. It might take me a little bit of time, but I get there. And um, I try to do it 
you know, but there's times where the day's busy and, and hey, sorry. But with God, all things are possible. But he it blesses his people who walk in his plan and who are patient and walk in peace. It's all a for, it's all laid out for us. How? What do we need to do, God? How do we get it? What? What? And he says, all things are possible for those who believe. Let's see where it, Mark 9, 23 says, Jesus said to him, if you, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. What are you believing? Are you believing that God will bless you? Are you believing that all things are possible? Luke 18, 27 says, But he said, The things which are impossible with men are possible with God. With God. Proof that all things are possible with God. These are red letters, okay? This is Jesus talking. He's telling us, as long as we believe, we'll have it. Anything that may be impossible with us, it's possible with God. All we have to do is ask and believe. I'm believing with you. I really am. I want your breakthrough. I want you to walk in peace in his perfect plan now. I don't want no hesitation, no. I want you to truly, truly walk in peace. Walk in, in, in his power. That's our next word, his power. Acts 1, 8 says, But you, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth, even to Pico Rivera, yeah, yeah, and the surrounding cities. Thank you, God, for your Holy Spirit. Thank you that you've sent him. Thank you that he abides in us. I am, if you're not filled with the Holy Spirit, ask him. That's the word says, just ask and he'll fill you with the Spirit because he, that's his gift to us. Jesus had to go and he's coming back while he's, in the meantime, he left the Holy Spirit here with us, in us. We're his alive here on earth. He works through us. We're his hands and feet, his mouth. We need to do what his perfect plan is unfolding. 1 Corinthians 3.16 says, Do you not know that you are the temple of God? Did you not know that? That you're his house? That you're God's temple, that the Spirit of God dwells in you. The Holy Spirit dwells in you. Act accordingly. <laughs> you know, it is so true. The Spirit of God lives in us. He we have the power to do all things. God gave us the authority. <sighs> we have to walk in His plan. Ephesians 3, 19 and 20 says, To know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge. Again, there's a passes understanding, which surpasses knowledge. Passes knowledge that you may be filled with the fullness of God. Oh, come on. He's not giving you a little part. He's not giving you a little bit. You get a little bit and you get a little bit. And she has more than you. And look at how powerful she is. Look at what? Well, no, 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 no. He's his promise is which passes knowledge that you may be filled with the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power. Hmm. That works in us. According to the power that works in us. Not the God in heaven, he's way up there. Ooh, he doesn't, you know, no. The power that works in us. We have the power that it takes to move the mountains. We have the power that it takes to say, so shall it be. And stay at peace while we're waiting. We have the power. You know, 
I was asking God, God, all these peas, I, I, you want me to really um, do an overview on it? Well, how many peas did we have? I never even counted them. I was just, every week we had more than others. Sometimes we only did four and one time we did eight. And so we just had different, different numbers, right? And I said, I'm gonna count and see how many number, how many peas there are. <laughs> God is so good. I mean, he is a God of detail. I'm telling you. Because he had me do seven, which was his perfect number. He had me do eight peas. Today, we've done we've covered seven so far. I have one more, which is his. Um, it means completion, right? New beginnings. And all the P's that I covered for the seven weeks that we were in this series, we covered 40. Yep, 40. God is in the details, ladies. I had no idea there was 40. I was just okay P and I would put a whole bunch of them and he would say nope 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 and I'm like but 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 he said no no he had he, his plan and I was like okay you know I'll just do the peas you tell me to God and um the Lord I mean because it was pestilence and there was it's so good because he had this detail so that when I counted them today, I would be in awe of him. I said, God, you're real. I mean, you always are in the details. 40 days and 40 nights, 40 years in the desert, 40 P <laughs> words for our perfect plan now. You know, series, it is amazing that God is in the details. If you can't see it, if you're not on fire because of it, if you don't get excited like I was, I mean, it even brought tears to my eyes when I was like, oh, that's 40! Oh my God, that's 40, that's 40, that's 40! <laughs> yep, that's me. That's how excited I got. And then I went, wow, God, you are in the details. You are amazing. Wow. Wow. And he said, all this all this walking in his perfect plan why so we can Hebrews 10 36 for you have need of endurance so that after you have done the will of God meaning walking in his perfect plan now making sure you're patient keeping your peace praising and prayer you may receive the promise. You may receive the promise. All this to assure us that we receive the promise. How good God we have. Come on. God is so good because all he wants to do is give to us. He doesn't want to take away. He wants to give us strength. He wants to give us peace. He wants to give us all that we need, anything is possible with him. But most of all, he wants to give us the promise of eternal life, that we will have heaven as our goal, heaven as our destiny. But we can live heaven on earth. His promises can unfold now. He can bless us now. We can walk in blessings, the windows of heaven overflowing. If we do the word and are doers of the word, he will make a way. He will unfold his perfect plan now. Are you with me? Are you with me to have his perfect plan unfold now? To work through us so that he can work for us? Because we usually just want him to work for us. Give me, give me, give me. I want this. I want that. I want all the green lights. I want, you know. I mean, you guys. I have a testimony going on right now with Stephen's surgery. He's take, getting surgery. And they sent us to a orthopedic doctor. And then the orthopedic doctor referred us to an orthopedic surgeon, a specialist. Took two weeks to get that appointment. So we go there. And it's been like over a month. And we go there. 
the doctor says, oh, I'm sorry, you need an orthopedic trauma specialist, surgeon. Wow, that's a long title. <laughs> orthopedic trauma specialist or surgeon. I'm not the doctor who can give you the surgery. We went intending to get an appointment for his surgery. Now we have to wait two weeks. You think I, we were happy about that? Do you think we were at peace about that? We've been waiting over a month to get surgery. My son's in pain. He's in a wheelchair. He can't do much. He's hurting really bad. You think that I was like, oh, the two more weeks. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> but God's perfect plan. Now, I live what I preach. I'm telling you. God gives me lesson after lesson after lesson. Not just today with my little grandson coming over and things going different. No, 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 no. Going to canes <clears throat> and all that. No. I'm talking about major things, major waiting. Even bigger than that. I'm still waiting on something that God's going to bless me with. But I'm patiently waiting in peace. So let us pray. Father God, right now, I thank you that we understand, Lord, that no matter what, you are in the details. No matter what, you gave us 40 Ps to know that your perfect plan now, God, you gave us, it's all in the word. Your word declares and decrees what we should do and how we should do it. And we need to be bold and courageous and do it now. No more waiting, God. No more waiting to do what you've asked us to do because we have to walk in your will. But when we have to wait, when you tell us it's time to wait, we need to do it in a patient manner and peace. God, give us the strength to wait. Give us the strength to be bold. Give us the strength to walk out. Whatever it is for your perfect will, for your perfect plan to be done now, God, don't let us get ahead of you, Lord. Help us now, Lord, please. We need your help. And you said that when we get in a dilemma, when we get in a pickle, <laughs> another pee, God, you're funny, that all we have to do is say, Jesus, 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 for every knee shall bow in the name of Jesus. The Lord is saying, do you not know that I have a perfect plan for you? I am unfolding it now. I am not allowing anything to get in the way. I am directing your path. My will be done, not yours. Be patient, be patient. And Oh, God, I know the pain. God says, I know the pain is real. <sighs> the pain is real. But God is mightier than that pain. He's more powerful than that pain. It is possible with God to get through this, continue to be strong and endure and do not grow weak while doing good. Walk in his perfect plan now in peace for he promises you here is breakthrough now. Now's the breakthrough. Declare it now. Don't say, oh God, we'll do it someday. No, now in Jesus mighty name. We want your now season. God, we're in a now season. We want access to every bit of heaven, Lord. So your heaven your will can be done here on earth your will is good father your will is good and we thank you for your perfect will be done in jesus mighty name hallelujah 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 victory is ours <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Oh, I love you, Lord. I praise you and I honor you. And we seal this series in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. Oh, thank you for tuning in. And as we always have to remind you here at Hope, people are our hearts. Generosity is our opportunity. Excellence is our spirit. 
Smiling is our favorite and Jesus is our Lord. We'll see you tomorrow. Science Ministry at 11. Be here a little early. And Academy of Righteousness. I hope you're um, all doing your work. <laughs> you're journaling and you're faith building because it only makes it deeper relationship with God. But I have to remind you, we're having baptisms this Sunday. So I hope you've signed up. And you're coming early, you're bringing your shorts, your, you know, all that they've asked you to do, your own towel. And please, please, please make, please be baptized. It's an amazing, amazing step in faith. And I just want to let you know, I love you and we'll see you Sunday at nine or six. Bye everyone. Oh, thank you.